Lighting methods for RNL. Creating scenes that look rather like photographs ask for special lighting schemes. The Bryson alone is not adequate. We are looking at IBL, HRI in TA gill and obscure lighting. In order to be able to assess whether a render looks photorealistic, a controlled environment has to be set up. A real scene has to be photographed and this scene must be recreated artificially, rendered and then compared to the photograph. Natural light can be created by capturing the light, color and intensity around the scene. This is called a light probe. The light ought not to change while acquiring the light probe and photographing the reference scene. The light probe was assembled from 30 five photographs using exposure times from 4 seconds to 1 60th of a second at f-stop 8 and 100 ISO. These photographs were taken within 7 minutes in a room with partly artificial light and partly daylight but without direct sunlight. The dynamic range is 1470 to 1, maximum radiosity is 28. In the zenith is a lamp with a reflector bulb that directs the light to the ceiling. It is 90 cm or 3 feet from the lens. The lens is 115 cm or 3.8 feet above the floor. The brightest light comes through the window. Its brightness, mostly blue, is around double as bright as the bulb above, which is rather reddish. The other light sources only contribute to the ambient light. The scene was set up exactly below the light bulb. Removing the gear to acquire the light probe and setting up the scene took 11 minutes and photographing the scene from four angles took another nine minutes. The light probe and the four photographs were acquired within a total of 26 minutes, in which time the sun moved by 6.5 degrees over the house towards the brightest window. The overall light did not change perceivably. Here the left picture is the bright scene and at right the photograph of the real scene. Care has been taken to get approximately the same horizontal field of view for the photograph and the render. The models are to scale with the real objects. The Bryce camera was set to a field of view of 120 degrees, which would be in the diagonal of a 4 to 3 aspect ratio document. Here we have an aspect ratio of 2 to 3 to match the real camera. And this gives a horizontal field of view of around 100 degrees, a vertical one of 130 degrees and a diagonal one of 140 degrees. The Bryce camera starts to stretch the lines because it has no distortion correction like the camera lens. On second thought, it might have been a better idea to photograph the scene with a fisheye lens and attach the fisheye lens to the Bryce camera. However, this does not affect the result as far as light is concerned. In Bryce, the tone mapped HRI backdrop is on a sphere with an infinite diameter and it cannot be scaled. Placing the scene becomes extremely difficult, if not impossible, because of the parallax errors. If the backdrop is used, where the nearest objects are far away, this would not much matter. More serious is that the light sources, one of which is quite near, are treated as if at infinite distance. The real sun, in an outdoor scene, can be considered to be at infinite distance, like in the light probe. Unfortunately, there is no controlled environment available outdoors. Cloud movement and wind are hardly controllable. With these limitations in mind, the following tests were performed using three different lighting schemes. The scene was rendered using IBL, 
HRI in TA Gale, a true ambience variant brought forward by David Brennan, and also one of David's ideas, Obscure Light. With each method, the scene was rendered from four viewpoints. The material properties were not changed. The missing shadows from the objects on the floor should be ignored. It was not intended to make that part looking natural. Only the light on the objects and the shadows cast onto the objects is of interest for this investigation. Image-based light would seem to be the ideal candidate for rendering this natural light. After all, the movie industry has been doing this for years. For pure image-based light we have to consider the disadvantage that the light sources are near to the object in the real world but at infinite distance in Bryce. We use IBL at quality 256, saturation at 50 and intensity at 7 and not apply to the light source. This gives us the backdrop. Then we have full specularity, the HRI effect which gives the light is set to 40, we have 75% of shadow intensity and we have tone mapped the HRI which we have added to the sky. There is no sun and moon except sun and moon shadows at 100%, sky dome is fully black, ambient is fully white, there are no clouds, there is no atmosphere and the HRI used is a large one. Apart from the bending, the shadows look pretty good, perhaps still a bit dark. Specular on the upside down metallic ashtray is a bit wide, but that could be corrected for. There is too much dynamic in the light. Where the light from the window, providing the main shadow, hits the side wall of the table, it gets too bright, but these parts which point away from the window are too dark. This can only be corrected with a lower dynamic range HRI. HRI in TA Gale for this method, how it is set up, please watch David's video using IBL with boot light and TA Gale. This is a true ambience render, not a classic one, but one that uses boost light. Premium render, true ambience, TS sketching and correction, boost light, maximum ray depth 4. The toe mapped HRI does not provide any light. HRI effect is at zero, but true ambience optimization is enabled. Again it is added to the sky. We then there are four TA optimized radials surrounding the scene and I have the toe mapped spherical projected LDRI wrapped about them. These provide the light. This is the LDRI which is mapped around the radials at 100% ambience and full transparency. And then there is a fifth radial also through ambience optimized included to the background uses a gale which is completely black and this functions as firewall. The shadows are very diffuse and short but are in the expected general direction. The objects are evenly lit. I particularly like how the top of the white box is lit by a pale yellowish light from the lamp above it. All objects are nicely lit. The parts in the direct light from the window are not over bright. What is not hit by direct light is not dark. This is so because the TA feelers gather the light from the LDRI on the radials. 
What I miss is the specular on the metal, so this could be corrected for by adding an additional radial or the Bryson with a moderately high specular setting. This is a very nice setup for still life, but fails in several aspects to match a photograph. On the other hand, if we had no photograph to compare this render with, we might consider it natural looking, at least as far as the light on and around the table is concerned. It looks quite realistic. Obscure light for this method, how it is set up, please watch David's video How to set up obscure lighting. This lighting scheme also uses an HRI and true ambience, however, the main light is produced by the HRI from inside. We have TA scattering boost light, true ambience, premium maximum ray depth 4 and 256 rays per pixel. Again, HRI quality at 16 added to the sky as intensity applied to light source and true ambience optimization not enabled. This is very important. And HRI light from inside. The effect is at 50 and it generates the light. This is an amplifier. There is one radial around the scene, only one with true ambience optimization on. It includes the background. It uses gale, and the gale can be just the default gray, or you can make diffuse to fully white to double the light output, though. This can also be done by increasing the HRI effect in the IVL tab. Very important, this radial must have the name background. Again, almost no shadows, the bit of them points in the expected direction. The objects are evenly lit as we expect from a TA render, but we see more dynamic in the light. The side of the table lit by the main light from the window is quite bright, but not overly so as in the IBL render. The quality of the light approaches the one in the photograph, except that the shadows are mostly missing. There is some specular on the metallic ashtray, but not a lot. This could be remeride with an additional light providing only specular. If you have no photograph to compare the render, we would probably say this is a very realistic looking render. The HRI plays an important role for these lighting techniques, least for HRI in TA Gill. A light probe was made about a year ago in the same environment, though the lens did not exactly point at the light at the ceiling and the lens was nearer about 60 centimeters or 2 feet and higher up the floor at about 151 centimeters or 5 feet. There was also less light coming from the window, approximately the same amount as from the light above. The dynamic range of the older light probe is almost five times at 7060 to 1. The higher dynamic range does not necessarily mean the light sources are brighter, it can also mean that there are darker parts and this is the case for this light probe, which was assembled from 56 photographs using exposure times from a half a second to 1 125th of a second at f-stop 5.6 and 200 ISO. Here we have the IBL render under the older HRI. We have the light coming from above shining on the white box and also shining on the tabletop, which is very much illuminated. The shadows are on the lowest part of the table. There is a bit of light shining in from the left side through the window, giving the shadows. Here we have the same HRI in TA Gale, 
as we've used it for our reference render and here under the light of the older light probe which makes everything very very yellow reddish because the light is so near and it is yellow. This is our reference render for obscure light and the same render under the older HRI which is also quite redder if we compare it there is less light shining on the top of the white box than in the render which uses the older HDRI where more light is coming from up. What is obvious is the pale yellow light that shines from above and casts shadows. The light from the window left of the scene is less strong and casts a shadow on the white box in the IBL render also obvious is a different white balancing. The examples with the older probe are warmer. I set out to determine which method is the most promising to make renders appear photorealistic. None produces this quality completely, but each one in part. In an environment with one or several prominent light sources that cast shadows, IBL appears to be best suited. For indoors and still lives, where we do not expect shadows which give a directional clue where a prominent light source is located, because there is so much reflected ambient light, I prefer the obscure light method. The color of the light is nicely represented through the HRI from inside. It is easier to set it up than the HRI in TA Gale and gives better control over the brightness. It would be rather nice if we could use the HRI from inside and outside at the same time with individual controls of the light generated by each one of them. Then we could combine the IBL and obscure light methods. Obscure light with the HRI from inside giving the environment light and the HRI from the outside the shadows. The tests performed are also a bit unfair because the materials on the objects were never adapted to the necessities and the possibilities of the lighting method used. The eye can be easily cheated and if we do not have a direct comparison we accept a non-realistic render as a realistic one if it is aesthetically pleasing. As far as art is concerned this is the most important aspect. Finally, some example renders made with materials adjusted to give the best results for each method. The table is from the Bryce Library. The 3D Möbius is a free model made by David Brennan. And it is available from here. This is a sphere, a bright sphere, as mirror ball, and here is the Utah teapot, which is a classic and will eventually be available with the Bryce 7 content bundle 2 from Dust 3D. The HRI use is the older one, specular on the 3D Möbius, and teapot is genuine from the HRI in this IBL render. The IBL is set as backdrop at to sky with 128 uh, quality, 50% saturation, intensity at 7 and apply to the light source to have an amplifier for the specularity which is set to 750. Very important and HRI effect gives light 150. We have soft shadows and an intensity of 50%. The light from the window is reflected in the Utah teapot. The main light is coming down from the lamp above, which gives also the specular. It's render premium with 16 rays per pixel and sh soft shadows. The render time is 100%. Here we have HRI in TA Gale under the old light probe. It is rendered premium with 256 pixels per race per pixels, true ambience, boost light and so on. 
the HRI is a spectrop with quality 60 that is sufficient, no soft shadows, no apply to the light source, and the HRI if gives no light off, but true ambience has been set. Then we have the four lights we need here, which are set to true ambience optimization, U scale, include the background and the procedural has Ditto mapped HRI on those four light sources. There is no sun and moon but we have specular set to 100 and the sun specular set to the position where the light above the table is to create the specular on the Utah teapot and on the Möbius, 3D Möbius object. The render time is 257 percent. That means two and a half times longer than the IBL render. And this is the obscure light render, premium with 256 rays per pixel, true ambience and so on. Render time is 185 percent. Also here we have specular set and the sun in the zenith to emulate the lamp above. Added to sky, no shadows, 100% saturation, intensity, apply to light source, HR effect with the multiplier at 500 and the light is from the inside. And true ambience optimization is disabled, which is important. Then we have the radial, the single one, true ambience optimized, uh, included to the backdrop. As procedural, we have just the price default gray. The Utah teapot has the material gray with specularity and anisotropy and 15% reflection. The 3D Möbius has the same settings for the material except that it has no reflection. And this render needs about 185% of the other one. This concludes the video. I hope you found the tests interesting and watching this video not a waste of time.